All right, I started the recording. Um, hello, everybody. This is uh, Kubernetes SIG Architecture Community Meeting um, for uh, January 16th, 2020. And um, please uh, be kind to each other and adhere to our code of conduct. Thank you. And uh, let's get started. Um, share the agenda. Okay, so uh, we have a couple things to discuss today. Uh, I'm actually going to move this um, up before. I'll move the subproject readouts till the end, and we'll we'll do the other topics first. Um, all right. Um, first thing, uh, if anybody wants to comment on, is uh, Tim sent out to the mailing list yesterday uh, a discussion around the cap process suggestions. Um, we, if some of you may recall, uh, a few months ago, we started, a few of us in SIG architecture, kind of trying to review caps. And what we found is that as we just tried to find the caps that might be of interest to review, it was, uh, you know, it was a lot of, a lot to slog through, some hard to tell which ones were at what state. And um, so along those lines, uh, we uh, are, came up with some suggestions um, and hopefully folks have, have read those. But uh, basically, I don't know if we wanna talk about these in detail here or more just open up the, 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 the conversation to um, any other ideas or maybe people can follow up on the mailing list. I'm not, uh, I wanna make sure we make productive use of the time. But the, the basic suggestions were, uh, change to use directory structure for the state so that it's really easy to tell what's already marked implementable, what's provisional and therefore needs more review, um, and uh, what's already done. Right now, a lot of things never even get updated to being done um, to be implemented state. Um, change the names a little bit in order to make it, uh, you know, ordered kind of by the presentation order, uh, not so much the date, which we don't really, I don't know that we care about it that much. And um, a bigger one, there's a, an ethic of, or a recommendation of merge and iterate on the caps, but what that sometimes does is make uh, disagreements get lost, as opposed to, um, you know, it's difficult to comment on a cap that's already merged and, um, so this was uh, a suggestion to come up with a way, some tooling around annotating the cap in order to say this section is still um, not resolved, it's still under discussion. Um, then we can merge, I, although what, what is the advantage of that, Tim, you're thinking beyond just keeping the PR open? Um, I mean, the, the merge and iterate uh, idea was so that we can, lock in the bits that we do agree on and then focus on the bits that we don't. It's just not clear which are which at this point. Um, if you've ever had to review one of these mega caps that are like, you know, 20 plus pages, dual stack, I'm looking at you, um, and you want to find the things that have changed, like it's incredibly painful to go right. back through a 20 page cap over and over and over again to see what's different from the last time. So I think the merge and iterate approach is good for that but it's not clear which parts are not done yet. So when you're looking at the thing that's merged, you don't know what is like open for discussion. Right, right. For a large cap where there's sections where a lot of it is agreed to and you can proceed with. Then, right. But you can't really proceed to implementable anyway. Right. But I guess people can still do work. Just practically, you will break GitHub if you accumulate more than a few hundred comments. And so like, yeah, if there are sections that were resolved wrapping up those, taking sort of the unresolved questions and hoisting those to the next iteration. Um, all the normal tricks about like re-reviewing PRs that change over time don't work with caps because it's a single file. So the, like I already viewed these 100 files and these three files changed and I need to look at them again. Like that doesn't work in the, like in the cap. Yeah, I mean, you could theoretically do it in commits, but I think you'll probably break GitHub, like you said. Yeah, the problem with the first two uh, is just the URLs are going to break and we have to yeah. go fix all the references. Yeah, so um, so there's like 
breaking into two problems. There's all the existing keps, which we'd have to go sort of back populate, which is a pain in the butt, but tractable, at least bounded. Um, I acknowledge that if keps move within the repo, that makes for a very tedious inability to link to them. One answer, I guess, could be to use a short URL and so tell people you have to update, you send me two PRs to move your cap. One actually moves the file, the second one uh, changes the URL redirector. So keps.kates.io slash one, two, three, four, five moves from provisional to implementable um, in the URL. That feels a little tedious too. Um, I'm open to better suggestions there, but that argument holds water with me. I mean, if we have a redirector, something that scrapes the repo and rebuilds the map of like this kept number is here, this kept number is here, this kept number is here, and does that on some interval, like, and then tell everyone use the redirector to refer to a kept. That seems yeah. hard. I mean, that, that's that really easy sense. to write, especially if you name them with the kept number. Totally. Uh, although I feel like I'm, I know all the redirectors, and yet I'm guilty of often just cut and pasting the URL from my URL bar, um, which of course doesn't show in the redirector. By design, I mean, the redirector could turn into a proxy so that the URL remained, um, but then we deal with SSL and all sorts of stuff. So um, I'm not sure we really want to, and, I, and we put like our poor little Nginx server in the data path for everything, which I'm not sure we want to do. Right. Uh, the, okay, just to the redirect thing, we, I think we could figure out. The thing that I would be a little more hesitant about is losing history. So GitHub is really bad about showing you history when a file gets moved. Mm. Um, Git can do it, but it, it's not it's not the worst. But it's really tedious to be like, oh, well, when did this happen? It's like move to done, and there's no history on the file. Yes. Um, so, Tim, so is, go ahead, please. One thing here, Tim. Yeah. So this is Derek. Um, just trying to capture like maybe some of the spirit of the conversation we had uh, for those who weren't there. Like, I think maybe it's worth asking, like, why do we link? to other caps from new caps. And I think if I remember a comment you had had, it was basically like, you know, caps aren't like documentation. Like the point was, this is, I'm enhancing something that had already existed. So like maybe if we were reflecting as well, why did you link to previous caps? Like, should you instead just be linking to actual community documentation, which is ideally the result of something being done and then documented. Um, and, but like caps weren't, documentation and I think we sometimes link to it historically like they were across caps or something so I, I think that they are design documentation we don't redocument the designs and the design decisions anywhere else well yeah but, I, I just or do we I guess Tim I'm wondering am I misrepresenting the spirit of what your original thought was or uh, I mean I think there was there were a couple things there was like should I at some point in the future go back and edit a cap that has already been implemented like I don't know that we, I don't know that it's worth the energy to try to keep caps as up to date design documents. They're more like point in time, which makes them less useful as documentation. Um, but Daniel's over here scowling at me. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, no, I think my, my group, has, uh, API Machinery, like, or definitely with uh, the server side apply, we've been updating the cap as we've changed our minds about that. Uh, Once it's implemented. implemented. Once it's done. Are oh, you going to go oh, back and do that? that? Yeah, when, five years from now, when somebody adds a feature to server side of flight, are you going to come back to this cap? I mean, changing? after it goes to GA, why would we be making changes that's to the design? That, that's my point. <laughs> the, well, the, the, the that would technical be new cap. design lives, and it will mutate over the next five years, and you're not going to come back to this cap. You might have subsequent caps, which may refer to this cap or add on to it, but I don't think they are this cap. And that is... That is one view. I do think there is an argument that says maybe we don't want to be like all those law books where they like give you a diff to apply to the previous law that they passed 10 years ago. Scratch the law. Uh, I mean, it's a thought. I, I don't know that I'm, I have a super strong opinion. I, I don't. Um, but I do find myself linking to caps when I'm talking to people and they say, just this morning, somebody said, well, what are the numbers we have around services and size and, and number of endpoints in a single service? And I said, go read this cap because we, we worked out the numbers and the data in there, right? So I did, I went and I have a URL and I pasted it. And I, actually, I think in this case, I just said, go find this cap because I was on mobile. But, but there, are, there are presentations, every, they're all over the place. That's right. right. So having, 
having a URL redirector seems like a reasonable thing to do. I like Jordan's idea of having it sort of auto scrape. That's a more complicated thing than, you know, it, it's, it's something more than nothing. Um, it's more than a config file, but it seems tractable. Um, the question I want to ask, I guess, against my own design is that takes one piece of metadata and moves it up into a higher order thing. So now we'll have two, right? We have SIG and um, uh, state, right? But is there going to be a third one? Is there going to be a fourth one uh, where we want to move more and more metadata into that structure? And if so, maybe we should revisit what Caleb had started with Kepco and actually just turn this into a tool that runs over a yeah. local repo. I don't know if someone else has said this already since I'm late, sorry. But I, the thing I didn't get about the, the proposal is like, if you have to write a tool anyway, why not make the tool uh, tell you the things you want to know with the caps in their current location? Then like, I don't understand how adding the directory structure helps if you're going to have to write a tool anyway. Okay. I'm not going to write a tool. If, the, if there's a directory it's structure, a tool yeah, I just go to the, or the provisional directory and I see what's there. And I go shopping for things that are interesting. Uh, maybe it's simpler to add a, like a Netlify website with drop downs for all the metadata that we are looking for, whether it is, and then if we have a Netlify site, then we could figure out how the URL structure is going to be and map them to actual disk uh, struct, data structure, I mean, file they, structures. They, they actually have machine parsable uh, yes. headers. Yes, purpose. right, exactly. Right. Searches them That's what that tool was. was. So yeah. Caleb started writing this tool, right? I think um, he had grander vision for it than just a query tool, but just a query tool might be useful. The workflow could be clone the repo, run this tool against it, and it will generate a sort of index, and then you can query through the tool, show me all the caps that are provisional, and then it would give you the names. And yeah, I don't think this is the only use case, right? There's other use cases around like the release team tracking, the enhancements, and the progress, progress of it. So yeah. I, I, I have to say, it's getting, we've, we're 15 minutes in on this topic, yeah. and like. <laughs> I, we can I'm, keep going by email. Yeah, <laughs> why don't we, unless it looks like maybe somebody's raised their hand here. Like, if somebody, ha, uh, if somebody is burning to say something, then. Yes, uh, Christoph said something. <laughs> okay. So I don't know how all the Netlify stuff works, but if somebody understands it and has experience with it and wants to throw together a demo, I'd love to see it. Yeah, the other thing similar to that is the release notes, that website that we have, right? So it would be similar to that too. Uh, anyway, we can defer that for later. And, and honestly, if, if somebody else feels like this speaks to them, I'd be happy to work with somebody to prototype the tool or take what Caleb had written if we can get access to it. I'm pretty sure we can. Um, and, and run with it and sort of prototype a couple different approaches to this. Because I'm keenly interested in keeping up on caps. Yeah. And I'm too hard. Now. It's, it's simply too hard to do. Yeah. OK. All right. Um, any, is there is there anybody volunteering raising their hand? Put your name in the agenda here if you if you're if you're volunteering here, um, uh, and otherwise let's uh, let's continue this discussion on the mailing list. Uh, the next item up is the uh, the structured logging cap. Um, so uh, we have uh, a guest here to Merrick is here to talk about that. So please go ahead. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, I work with SIG Instrumentation uh, and currently uh, are hosting or like working on a cap for introducing structured logging. So if I would just quickly browse through uh, what is currently in, G uh, in Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, we have like, we are using K-Log, which is like some enhanced version of like pretty basic G-Log that was based on C++ idea of writing logs. So it has like multiple problems, like uh, it's mainly used for easy debugging, but you cannot really do much well as a, if you think about as a cluster administrator of multiple cluster about making any sense of those logs if you don't know exact 
if you don't previously seen them in code, it's uh, really hard to interpret and understand. Uh, we are also, it's not very useful if you think about other pillars of observability, like tracing, um, like metrics. So basically be, be, being able to match uh, some events uh, or, uh, sorry, events is a bad word uh, for it. Um, some metrics or traces to, to uh, with referencing some object. Uh, so I mean, metrics in Kubernetes uh, pointing into um, matching them with, okay, uh, sorry. So this makes it, so the basic problem is that we don't have any consistent metadata that someone could uh, use to, to be able to ingest them into current uh, like advanced logging solutions like Elasticsearch, BigQuery, um, or currently like other uh, vendor products that they could um, utilize on more um, <clears throat> like more uh, broad or having a better understanding what is really happening uh, between um, between co like being able to join and different logs without uh, uh, yeah without this consistent metadata. So what we are proposing is we are proposing to introduce a, a structured cl client uh, interface for logging. Um, this client would be based on work that previously done by uh, Tim and so, uh, uh, Solly, um, Solly Ross, um, the, he's the X man uh, uh, on uh, Log Air. We are uh, we 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 are picking or like our idea is that we want to focus more on the interface, not on implement uh, direct implementation. Um, second thing that we want to make sure is that we create uh, ensure that the date uh, metadata of all the logs is consistent so um, both administrators and developers can look at uh, logs they can search them in they can or be, search them themselves using a, a, um, easily to predict uh, metadata but also can build more advanced tools to to look at this data and uh, then join for example logs about a pod uh, being able to join logs about uh, from controller manager uh, from uh, api server or any like and other uh, and from kubelet and see one view uh, and he, uh, see one history one consistent stream of logs that um, gives our better history of what exact happened, what events happened in in whole cluster. So more uh, holistic, uh, more holistic view. Um, so main, main, really important part of this change is uh, migration. So we are here proposing um, pretty. We, we want to propose pretty detailed plan that uh, make we want to make sure that we will hit um, you will get the completeness and uh, and ensure that we don't get st stuck in, in middle so we for that we um, we decided that we wanted to uh, firstly uh, we need to be, there, there was some comments that we should uh, to ensure we shouldn't uh, change the default behavior of logging and we should wait for uh, uh, so until GA we want to um, ensure that all the logs will preserve their previous format um, <clears throat> 
Let me, uh, so for that, we are proposing to uh, we are proposing to use and um, double like double call, uh, call or have a two separate APIs. The uh, one still using with we will still use Keylog, and additionally we would uh, add a se separate. Um, calls to the, um, the, the new logging in, uh, interface. And we would introduce, we would write a tooling that would ensure, we'll, we'll try to do most of the work on, t on transferring the key log format into the new, uh, new uh, logger, log air uh, format. Um, and ensure tooling that this, th we don't, um, the, we don't get um, get any regressions back, so ensuring that uh, no new um, K log, log every K log log should uh, or invocation should have uh, their own matching uh, new uh, call to the new API. <clears throat> um, so. For, for, for this, this is uh, for uh, the migration and the la like one last thing that we wanted to uh, ensure is that uh, there is a separate effort in SIG instrumentation uh, uh, with introducing tracing. So we wanted to make sure that uh, like lo we knew that logging is a pretty or easiest uh, uh, or much easier to start and introduce effort than tracing about like the uh, the metadata um, <clears throat> that we want to by because tracing would uh, also need, need, needs a consistent metadata and it needs a full propagation of uh, co context uh, through the call stack. So as part of that, we uh, we've decided that we'll be um, introducing. Uh, we we would be implementing the new interface to di to directly support and interact with. Uh, make sure that interacts well with tra tracing uh, libraries, uh, in a way that we um, are able to. To use the same metadata in both logging and tracing, and ensure that th those both uh, those those both uh, instrumentation met methods are useful. Um, okay, let maybe let I would uh, let, don't let me stumble more. I I could uh, I think we could open it for more for discussion and. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I think that uh, one question would be, um, I guess, part of this is to bring awareness to everybody and make sure that everybody's aware of this is going on. That's why we're in the meeting here with it. If there are any direct questions, I think we should we should do that, but we do have limited time. So one, I think two things that Tim, I think, said uh, to take an eye with this is whether we agree with the end result and then on the process. Can you, Merrick, can you say a little bit more about who would do the work? How, like, what what level of effort do we have here? And does that go to all the SIGs? Is that something instrumentation is taking on? What, uh, how is that going to work? So, uh, instrumentation is like we will take part of the tooling that needs to be done and fully support and guide all other like all other uh, SIGs. So we'll make sure that. Uh, like as a part of migration, we'll ensure that all the toolings will get us like as much possible there uh, as we can. Um, but uh, and all like this um, checking, checking and status analysis that uh, will be there to protect us before like from um, from any regressions. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, I, if I can jump, because I'm going to have to step out in a couple minutes. Um, I'm a fan of the idea. Uh, I think the end goal is a notable goal, and I think this is the sort of change that has long-term benefits that we can't quite predict or quantify. 
That said, it's an enormous amount of work. And I think that if we turn this into an unfunded mandate on each of the SIGs, it will utterly fail. I think the, the only way to really make this happen is to say, we are going to take the responsibility on for this. And all we're asking from the SIGs would be, please review my changes to your code to make sure that they make sense. Even that is asking a lot, right? Yeah. Um, but since somebody has to review them, please just look at these log changes. We are going to take on the effort of making sure that the change sets are small and digestible and obvious. We'll do the tooling, which is incredibly hard, but we'll do the tooling to do the auto conversion. We'll pick it up from there. And the reason we have the incentive to make the tooling good is because we're the ones who have to pick up whatever the tooling leaves us and finish it. Um, and so that's, that's my uh, sense on it. I ran through the cap this morning and I left a few comments. Um, I think there's some really good comments there in the cap. So I encourage everybody on the call to please go back through it and, and look at it. But my main point that I wanted to make is if this, if you push this back onto, I'll just take my own SIG to SIG network, it will not get done. Yeah. I'll second that, Fred. I'm looking at it just a quick grip. I have thousands of log lines. Um, and I, I see value here. I have, I have a lot of questions mm -hmm. on like specifically how it fits in a lot of these use cases um, to, to be useful and serializable. But yeah, I don't have the, the personal incentive to try to actually go through the thousands. Yeah, if, if I can add my perspective, I, I think I only said one thing on the cap, which is um, I, I basically agree that there's many improvements that could be made to our logging in the current state is not great. Um, but when I look at the magnitude of this change compared to the benefits that it brings, I, I, just, I, I just do not see it as being remotely worth it, right? Like I, I think it's, we're talking years of people's lives to implement this. Like, hopefully spread out among many people, but that doesn't mean it's actually less time that would, it would have to, we would have to collectively invest to, to make this happen. And I just don't see the benefits as being commensurate with that cost. Um, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, sorry to be a, a no, downer, but you, uh, I mean, I think that they, I, that's why, no, everybody's going to, I mean, I think in some ways that's, it, it's an empirical, maybe too, almost impossible to actually measure, but the, the, there's a lot of, there's a lot more people out there operating Kubernetes than there are people yeah. making this change. No, I totally agree. If it saves them operational I, I, time or downtime. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. agree. If you look in the cap, Sally and I discussed this a little bit and like, uh, he came up with two examples, and one of them I fixed in 10 minutes, uh, or, or made a drastic improvement in 10 minutes, right? So, like, I think we can get maybe 80% of the pain with a series of targeted fixes rather than an enormous uh, <coughs> overreaching fix that, that like, I, 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 don't, I don't see myself participating in this. Like, even, even reviews for this for my SIG, I think, would be overwhelming. So, like, uh, so it's just I huge. I agree there's probably an 80-20 thing here, like so many things in our space, but uh, I actually, this is one of the few where I think the finishing it may be worthwhile. It's hard to quantify and put my finger on exactly why, but I think it might actually be worthwhile. I do think we have a community of people who are chomping at the bit to take on such changes if we just show them the template and they can carry it forward. And yeah, the reviews are gonna be a little bit tedious, but they're not that bad. Um, I mean, you know, famous last words, I guess. Uh, and, and they get buried behind a thousand PRs. Um, yeah, I just to, I mean, other places where we've set up a, a template and sort of a really approachable pull request style like static checks and uh, linting um, and shell script checking, I would actually say those have been pretty difficult to manage uh, and with questionable benefit. Um, like they tend to change a lot of files and the, those reviews are kind of the worst kinds of review, reviews where they're a really boring, non-interesting review. And then the one critical line is like buried 75 files in and it changes something important. Well, um, no, no review should be 75 files. Like we should make this rule like file at a time or directory at a time. Um, and I think one of the benefits here is this can be incremental. 
and a lot of it can be automated. Um, the automation is difficult. Like having tried to write this automation for client go, um, it is difficult. I found it difficult to get beyond about 50% efficacy, um, which means that there's a lot that you put back in humans' hands. If you can do better, Mark, I, I like, I welcome you to do better, please. I certainly did not um, engage with it as hard as I could have, um, but I found it very challenging. Yeah, I, keeping sort of the end users in mind, I, my perspective is that there are much more impactful things we could be doing with our time than improving log output, like reliability and flakes that may be test flakes, but also may be bugs and improving our test coverage on scenarios that users are actually hitting. Um, that's not to say this isn't important, but just priority wise, I don't see it as near the top of the list. Yeah, I, I'd like to add one one more thing to my, my statement, which is I am and have been at various points over the last many years. Uh, I've been a very heavy user of logs, at least of the API server logs. And, and like, it's a little annoying to, to search through them, but it, it's, it's it's doable. It's not the end of the world. Well, I, I think we're to 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 be devil's advocate there. I think that where this in theoretic, theoretically is more helpful is when you have to connect the logs between many different components and see what happened in a particular case, as opposed to just looking well, to. Or when yeah, you have that to just stare at a problem for when you have to stare at the aggregate of this across a hundred clusters. Like, I think that's where this starts to become a real challenge. I, I haven't had to do that. I, 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 I don't know why I would want to do that. You're not, you don't run a team, right? <laughs> yeah. No, my, my, my team is, we uh, uh, deal with many clusters who are paging us uh, and we haven't needed to do that. Okay. Okay. That, that's good enough. All right. Thank you. Um, well, everybody, please take a look at the cap, review it, and we'll, we'll um, continue the discussion there. Unless anybody else has a comment. All right. Um, next we have uh, Christophe. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is very, very quick. Um, I'm saying this in every meeting that I'm in this week. Um, Contribx has our annual survey out. Um, it takes about 10 minutes to complete. I especially I'm, I'm specifically talking to this crowd because uh, the, the, the long time <laughs> folks in the community definitely use GitHub and are tooling in a different way than our new contributors do. Um, so, and decisions from these surveys kind of impact how we prioritize, like what, you know, what GitHub automation do we want to get done in the next year? Or how are we going to change things to be more efficient? So please, if you haven't already, take the 10 minutes, fill out our annual survey. It's really important and it helps us make some, some priority decisions for next year. Thanks. And what's the deadline on that? Uh, deadline on it is tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific. Okay. And sorry, where can I find the link to this in our notes here? It is in the agenda. It is also, I have emailed out all 38 SIGs. I've emailed out KDEV, it, it's, been, it's been everywhere, but it is also right in the agenda right there if you need the, the, the fast link. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you for your stuff. Um, all right, then uh, we have about 20 minutes left for sub-project readouts. Uh, and, uh, and if we finish those quicker, then uh, and any, anybody wants to go back to earlier topics, we can. Um, so Dim's uh, code organization. Okay, uh, it's going to be quick. Uh, in the last meeting, code organization, nobody showed up. So <laughs> next one, please <laughs> show up. It was just me and I, uh, I couldn't talk to myself after five minutes. <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, there was some stuff that uh, I was able to work with uh, Jordan and other folks, um, mainly around uh, updating some of the dependencies. Uh, what I was trying to do was uh, trying to bunch a um, uh, bunch update uh, uh, dependencies early in the cycle. So we kind of like figure out, okay, what has changed and what, what we can take on for this cycle, that kind of stuff. 
So the 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 one that I tried this time was um, updating a bunch of dependencies in C advisor first, uh, updating it to containerd one three two, updating the Docker Docker and a few other dependencies in C advisor, and then turning around and use that updated C advisor in Kubernetes Kubernetes. Uh, along with a few other uh, dependencies like uh, HCS shim, which was from Signode, uh, Sigas, or one of those. So, um, what uh, for the most bit, I was able to get reviews from a lot of people this time. Um, so, the what we ended up doing was created a big PR uh, with all the things that ended up changing and then broke it into smaller PRs and get them in first while review was happening on the bigger PR as well. So uh, the, the where we ended up this morning was we, we updated a whole bunch of things uh, over the last uh, few days, but then where we ended up this morning was uh, Maybe uh, Jordan wants to speak to it, but I'll give you the highlight. The highlight was uh, C advisor seems to be dragging in a lot of uh, dependencies uh, that we don't use, um, uh, Kafka and ZFS and whatnot. So we should try to do better in C advisor, uh, just like what we did last time. Uh, last time, what we did was uh, we figured out a way to. Uh, reduce the number of runtimes that we pull in by fixing the imports and registering the things uh, and uh, things like that. So uh, we should do the same for uh, some of the storage stuff that is there in C Advisor. That will help us uh, drop some of the churn that we end up taking on. Do you want to speak about it, Jordan, a little bit more? Um, no, that's that's a pretty good summary. Okay. Trying to identify high value targets to spend time isolating can, uh, right and this go ahead uh, and this exercise is like uh, i'm trying to do it like really early in the cycle first uh, you know first chance we get um, so we we know what we are up against uh, and is, since we are do, if, since we did this analysis with c advisor and a bunch of other things we know that uh, you know c advisor we usually update towards really just before we make a uh, we we you know do the code freeze and stuff like that so doing it earlier uh, i think help this time um so we should try to do this uh, on an ongoing basis for every cycle i think uh, go ahead john uh, well i was gonna ask, so so what is the status of the effort to to move everything to semantically version modules when right um so so good, getting to Simver modules, uh, a lot of that involves our dependencies actually making use of Go modules um, and declaring a Go mod file. And that actually makes the problem worse before it gets better. It doesn't actually make it worse, but it makes it more visible. It makes the problem we already have more visible uh, because it takes all of their transitive dependencies and makes them explicit and makes them participate in our dependency tree. And so that's what happened with C Advisor. Between the last version of C Advisor and the current one, they added a Go mod file, which is great, but makes visible the problem we already had, which was that we had transitive dependencies on tons of storage drivers and like crazy database things. And, um, and so it's fine to have visibility to that, but that means to move forward, we actually need to resolve that problem. So uh, this is, it's painful, but this is on the, on the way to getting to version modules. Oh, right. Uh, and as a result of this analysis, what we've been doing is uh, pinging people in other projects like Containerd split some of their code into like Containerd console and Containerd C groups or something like that. So, and those didn't have uh, any versioning Semver stuff or even Go modules. So we pinged them and told them, uh, requested them to uh, add um, support for uh, Go modules and add support for Semver. So, uh, and the HCS, HCS shim folks, uh, we've had like an ongoing discussion with them for more than uh, two, three releases about uh, using a specific tag. Uh, and they are not willing to give us a tag when we need one. Uh, so they ended up creating a tag for something else. And then we said, okay, we are gonna use that for now. Uh, and then there was a discussion about, oh, but we didn't certify Kubernetes for, 
that tag that we cut. And then I was like, if you don't cut a tag, how will we test with Kubernetes? So it, it, there is some of this stuff happening uh, behind the scenes as well. So uh, it's more like making sure that we are talking to people and getting them to add support so we can then reuse. The other example that comes to mind is, uh, you know, where this will help is like when the thing with RunC uh, ends up getting merged, uh, the one that Jordan was working uh, on, then the RunC will have to hit uh, container D, RunC will have to hit Docker Docker, and then we'll have to pick, pick it up. So I have to figure out how that, uh, you know, sequence of uh, events will look like um, mm -hmm. because that that's a serious bug that we are tracking and we need a, you know we need to get it into our customers hands right and then um, one other question so what, what, are there any um, major pieces now people are looking to move to kutils or is that just um, what's the status or anything oh uh, we haven't really started any new work on moving things to utils this cycle. Um, I'm hoping to ping a few people to see if there is any interest to do any anything more this cycle, uh, maybe in the next call. I had one little problem, and I'm meaning to come to that working group, but I have been unable to make the time. Um, I found at least one PR that wanted to move something off into utils, where when I did a deeper review of it, like I found really egregious bugs in it and mm -hmm. it just got abandoned and like i feel like it was being moved for a reason but the bugs were so big basically the module kind of had to be rewritten those bugs still exist right they're they're more contained because they're deep inside kubernetes kubernetes <clears throat> but um they still exist like is there something we can do about this like I can, obviously I can't make people fix bugs. Did you or create an issue? Did you <laughs> there is a PR in progress that was in progress. Yeah, and you know it it tends to lose steam. Um, yeah, well know. I'm watching Fedabot age out this old PR mm -hmm. right. that was significant and like it's actually a pretty important module and it has some really nasty bugs in it um, and. Uh, I filed a separate issue against KK with, you know, there are really nasty bugs in this module, but it's not going to get moved to KUtils until it gets debugged. And that, I mean, I'm not sure that we do that level of exploration on every PR, but damn, we should because it was really insightful. Right. Uh, I, I mean, short of doing something in a Google Summer of Code or something like that, uh, where we can get focused people uh, working on on things, uh, I I don't know. It, it, somebody has to show up with the willingness to work, and we have to go find people who are interested in this kind of uh, uh, you know opportunity to learn. Um, you know, because this is really good stuff. Right. I mean, the, the, on the on the moving to utils, that that makes sense. I think on the bug, I guess I would have to ask is if it's such a nasty bug, are we seeing it in the field? Are customers reporting it? And so no, it, it's. Not, I think operationally, the way we use this module, it's not a bug. It doesn't surface. But right. none of the documentation covers that this bug exists and says, don't use it in this way. And sort of, but I just did a like, future problem. I did my thought exploration of like, what if I did this and then this and then this? Yeah. And then I wrote the code and I was like, yep, oh, there it is. The bug exists. And I pasted all the snippets of like, I, you know, I use this library in this way and it doesn't work. And nothing says not to use it this way. Right. So, uh, okay. So one incentive, Tim, I have is um, I can get somebody uh, to uh, pick that up if you can guide them, right? Like your time is valuable and I don't want to, uh, you know. Well, okay. I'm, and I'm happy to, to guide and weigh in on it. I, I tried to spend a lot of time on that review so that it was that, so that somebody could take it. What it came down to though is like, this is a significant module. I'm not gonna name and shame, but it was a significant important module that needs a different API. Like right. the semantics that the API offers aren't reasonable. And so yeah. I, and I, it's not even an, it's not an API that I've ever used inside KK, um, but 
if somebody wants to take it on, it's more than just a go fix some bugs. It's actually think about a new API for the same problem. Right. And the, the question here to this group is like, how do we create incentives for people to show up to do this kind of uh, stuff? This one seemed fun. I was surprised that it died. Like it seemed like a fun, hard problem to tackle that infrastructure dorks would really enjoy doing. Um, and understanding that the person who sent it is also a busy person who's not a, a drive-by contributor, so I'm sure they have other things to deal with. Um, and I didn't have anybody that I could throw the bug at. It wasn't on fire, and so I just let right. it sit. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, I'll shop around for it, uh, Tim. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Tim. Um, all right, um, production readiness, so, uh, it, our meeting yesterday, we had similar experience teams. It wasn't just me, David was there, and then Valerie showed up a little bit late. And But uh, we did actually call it and just say, uh, let's meet next time. But I sent out an email yesterday kind of giving where we are. We we um, just getting started back up after the holidays. We have uh, a sort of version two of our questionnaire. So we've had some refinements of that. Um, we're starting to uh, see caps people filling them out. Um, I have to check and see if we added it to the cap template yet. We, we would like to. Um, it, it's still a kind of non-blocking type of thing. Um, we want by the end of the month to send out a sort of quick survey that's going to try and inform um, the, the, um, the questionnaire and make sure that, that the kinds of questions we're asking are going to actually help alleviate the kinds of problems people are having. Um, and uh, so in my email, I asked anybody who's interested to please take a look at that. Um, there were some sample uh, or some uh, a draft questionnaire um, put together by some folks and uh, we're gonna try and focus that down a little bit. It was maybe a little bit too broad, but um, you'll see that in the comments on there. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I, I need to say on that right now. We're um, we're looking at the caps. Oh, and uh, also, I guess in the email, Vish sent out uh, some metrics because we want to make sure that you know this is an effective process. So, um, some ideas on how we might measure that. Uh, <coughs> if anybody who's interested, please go ahead and review. But that's where we are right now. Is um, uh, initial version of the questionnaires there? We're working on um, validating that and uh, making sure that it's effective. So that's all I've got. If there are no questions about it, it looks like uh, Clayton, you had something you wanted to discuss. Yeah, this is just a minor announcement. Um, we did find some interesting stuff um, with regards to adding new fields in API review. We're gonna discuss that in SIG Network since it was started by SIG Network. Um, so Jordan and I had just been deep in the weeds on this last couple of days. And that'll trigger some guideline changes to API review for adding new fields. Um, the, in brief, we added a field that depended on config and so you could configure a cluster and the implicit default value is one thing and you can configure it a different way. So that means external clients can't reason about it. So it turned out to be thornier than we initially thought. And so there was a lot of good discussion as we painfully unwound uh, question after question. Um, we will be discussing that at SIG Network on January 23rd at their uh, meeting. Thanks. I apologize for not responding to those emails. I've been out and sick the last couple of days. You don't want to be in this, Tim. Jordan and I already bled all over the carpet out of our. I, I'm ecosystem. considering being out and sick. What, what did you get? It can't be as bad as. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, but I take some of the blame for this because I think it was my suggestion to look at config here rather than trying to hard code something. Uh -huh. to, to be fair, the looking at config was not the issue. It was, it is a very, very hard thing to reason about. Both Jordan and I spotted numerous things where we would think we were okay think about something some more, come up with a new edge case, which helped us trigger a lot of questions for like, we, we probably need to, add, those questions will get added to like the API review, like what happens when you add this field and a server does that, like you're in a rolling upgrade between HA masters. You, you, kind, of, you kind of ran into like the perfect storm of all of the things that could make this hard. So yeah. a field we couldn't default all the time, a field that's mutable, a field that when it is defaulted is derived from another field and a field that uh, the behavior is based on server config. And like the also, intersection also of those wait. four things. No, one more. We introduced the field after implicitly introducing the field without explicitly introducing the field. So like the order was we supported single stack VP, 
uh, IPv6, and then we added a field to represent it. But that actually made that even more complicated because then you have the implicit behavior versus explicit. You have so clusters with awesome. opposite behavior that is. Implicit. I think we should just back out all of networking. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right. Um, thank you, everybody. We uh, we have five minutes left. If anybody has anything they want to discuss, otherwise we'll call it. I can't necessarily see hands waving. So if you're not putting anything in on chat, then uh, uh, we're done. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone.